The Ark is a Christian organization which started in Durban three years ago to help the homeless and unemployed, the people of the streets. After their amazing success, treating about 6,000 people, they spread their wings this month to Tokai in the Cape. Just uh, below Okapsa Vech, you'll find what was Dr. Stahl's TB sanatorium. Opened 40 years ago, but now lying derelict. The administrators of the Ark uh, hope to turn these crumbling buildings into a city of refuge, a home for the destitute and the downtrodden, in fact, anybody who needs help. And with these 50 hectares of land, there's room for many. It could be said that the Ark is steered by blind optimism. They call it pure faith. And their prayers were answered in the form of these abandoned red brick buildings. In fact, only three days after they saw the land, the House of Representatives and the CPA gave them permission to become the official caretakers. Founders of the Ark are Judy and Derek Donation. There are other places around the country for street people to go to. What's so different about the Ark? The Ark um, is slightly different in the sense that we are um, wanting to develop the person. We want to reinstate him back into society and therefore Overnight sheltering, which is the beginning of everything, is just the initiation. Then that introduces the second step, which, which gives us the opportunity to develop um, programs during the day. And that's we can categorize under uh, four major dimensions, which is the spiritual, the psychological, the physical, and the social. This social outcast, George, was delivered to their doors while we were filming. He was immediately taken to their clinic to be stripped of his clothing, de-liced, and given any medical attention needed. This hopefully is his first step in the long road of rehabilitation. has only been opened officially since yesterday and uh, already the word seems to have spread on all sides. We've just seen uh, this elderly bergie brought in from Musenberg Station and uh, now this donation of cutlery and food has arrived um, again from sources unknown. We never Ask raise funds, we never collect on the street corners, we never degrade God's ability to give to us. Derek and Judy have complete faith that God will provide, and so far he has. Money comes in from the church members and donations from the public. Their missionaries are all full-time volunteers who work for no salary. Right now there's food for all, but the Ark aims to house up to 2,000 people. They budget only for the next 24 hours. This is part of uh, Derek's Rand Stretcher diet, and believe me, many people here are very grateful for this uh, meal of a few pieces of bread and some scrambled eggs. He reckons it costs about a Rand a day to feed the people. That includes, of course, donations, with a total budget of two Rand per person per day, but that includes tuition and attaining lifestyle skills. Pretty boy Amen and Nico are street children whose only life skills so far have been begging. How long have you guys been on the streets for? Five years for me. Five years? Yes. But how old are you? Fifteen. And what happened to our men here? <laughs> Under the teeth <laughs> Huh? We should have glued the other time. The other guy, he's, he's, he's tackle glue. He plaked the glue here on his cup. And his head, right? And his head. Apparently, one of Amen's friends covered his face with glue which has left permanent physical scars. Before the arc, the only warmth these street kids had came from sniffing benzene and glue. But what does this do to you? Does it just it drop you off? Makes you drunk very cheaply. And you see movies of Popeye and from Mickey Mouse. Drug-induced dreams have now been replaced by reality and hard work. The Durban Arc, in conjunction with the Department of Manpower and the private sector, has taught basic skills like bricklaying, plumbing, and hairdressing to around 3,000 people. This city of refuge has the same aims, but right now the dormitories need beds. Greg Krobler is chairman of the Cape Town Arc. We actually have work therapy, we have sports therapy where the guys will play, and uh, we, we play together, we work together. Now a lot of the guys have ended up there because they were lazy, and we've got to change their minds and 
We don't, we don't just look after the spiritual needs. We look after the physical needs and uh, giving them clothing, food, and then we encourage them to work, but not with realizing, telling them that they're not working for us, but they're working for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, it tends to work. The guys tend to work hard, knowing that they're doing it for the Lord. Yeah? Here there is no distinction between oh, color, race, or even creed. And already an interesting group of people has moved in. We caught Charles during a smoke break. So uh, what happened in your life? Well, my, suddenly some people, some members of my family died and everything collapsed around me, you know, that was it. So from then on, I was just trying to like survive, you know. You strike me as somebody who had a pretty normal, orderly lifestyle at some stage. I did, yes. Yeah, I'd been overseas, all kinds of things, you know. Spent some years in the United States, came back here and for a couple of years everything was fine over here and then, like I said, everything just collapsed. And uh, can that happen quite easily to anyone? Yeah. Most of us think it couldn't happen to us and uh, you probably felt the same way. That's exactly the point. <laughs> I didn't just presume it wouldn't happen to me. I, I knew it wouldn't happen to me, and then it just did, you know. What do you see as uh, the way ahead? Do you want to get a job? Do you want to get uh, back to a, what do we call a normal lifestyle? Um, well, basically, I, um, I, want, I want to start to feel good about myself, and I'm pretty sure I can, I can work at that as well. I'd like to get, you know, some kind of temporary work or semi-permanent semi work, you know, just to, like, cover my expenses, etc. in the beginning. In the women's section, we've come across Daphne and Zelda, both uh, ex-strollers, both uh, mothers of young children, and both for the first time in many years, uh, if not a lifetime, finding people who actually care about them. Strolling is a term for people who live on the streets. Home for Daphne and her daughters was under a bridge. My mother was away when I was 11. That's on my crown with this last I saw. So, uh, my father is married. He's remarried with other other wife. Loving in Woodstock, he doesn't know about me. So not uh, too many people care about you? Maybe that's the problem. There's no electricity in this dormitory. In fact, we're filming this uh, using our own television lights. There are no hot showers. In fact, there's no running water. And the toilets have to be flushed using buckets. It's uh, early evening and it's already freezing. So you can imagine what it's like in here late at night. But the point is that after years on the streets, this place must uh, seem like a haven. Greg, it's uh, still quite rough in here, isn't it? Yeah, well, Derek, according to uh, a lot of people, it's, it's rough. But when we first moved in here, the, the place was in rack and ruin. We slept amongst the rubbish. We slept. Um, we had to clean the toilets out with our own hands. You know, all the months and months of uh, people using the toilet without flushing it and these kind of things. You know, we slept on the floor. We and so the guys can can't complain, the pastor sleeps in the corner with the guys, you know, there's no special jail or anything like that. We believe that we all, we all won. In fact, most of the missionaries' pasts are as troubled as those they shelter. Keith the chef was a Satanist, while Dorothy is an ex-drug addict, prostitute and alcoholic. Her life today is very different. What I love doing the street work, to go out onto the street and to look for the people. And I actually call them invisible people because many people just walk past them and they don't want to see these people anymore. Um, and I just go and talk to them and love them. For people to know about the Ark, City of Refuge, recruitment is sometimes needed. We accompanied Dorothy, Greg and Henny to Weinberg Station, home to many street people. There was no holding back our missionaries. This woman, Susan, found comfort in Dorothy's arms. All right. Denise, he's coming home. I'm going to take her to the bucket. He's coming home with us. He's also coming with us. Yeah. Uh, she's also been hit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Her husband is virtually blind and can no longer protect her. She had become the victim of many rapes, and the physical abuse on her body was evident. Both Susan and her husband were taken back to the ark. She seems in a bad way. Yeah. Okay. Seen worse. Ten times worse. This is the easy part. But tomorrow the actual work starts with her. The rehabilitation, loving her, caring her, cleaning her up. And then uh, uh, bring the word to her and tell her that there is hope for her. During our visit to the Ark, we saw a lot of love, compassion and understanding given to people we normally wouldn't touch. Knowing that a lot of these people would drift back to the streets anyway, 
we did wonder if it wasn't all a bit pointless. But the next morning, when George the Bergie, who'd arrived at Crumpled Heap, was wheeled into the daily devotional, we saw that there was a glimmer of hope. And what's more, Susan was there too. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, 